thanking you, Lord God, that you are Lord all by yourself. We got ourselves now, Lord God. We ask that you will speak to our hearts now. Lord God, utter forth the words that must be said in order to heal our brokenness. In order to fix our fraction, in order to order our steps, speak now, Lord. But Lord God, we know that when you speak, miracles take place. When you speak, Lord God, lives are saved, lives are transformed, lives are renewed and regenerated. Speak now, Lord. Speak now. Lord, you are Lord, Lord, all by yourself, all by yourself, all, all by yourself, all by yourself. You are Lord. God, God, speak now. Speak, speak now. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, remain standing if you would, and those of you with your Bibles, turn them if you to the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, camp if you would, at, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. And I want to lift up just one verse for your consideration this morning, but to do so I must start at the first verse and read the first eight verses of that chapter. I need your prayers this morning and those of you who are new to the setting, if you just learn how to talk preacher talk, say amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say it again, Reverend. And you'll discover that the preacher will quickly sit down. But if you just sit there and look at me, uh, next preaching engagement I have is uh, 3 o'clock today. Amen. So we'll be here for a long time. The whole idea is just to say something. Amen. Acts chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1. Reading the New King James Version of the Greek text, Dr. Luke writes, Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. As, Saul, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. And here's where I want to camp today. Verse 4 says, Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word of God. Let me just stop right there. I want to tag this text with this thought. I, I want to talk about um, life after the benediction. Life after the benediction. Amen. And praise the Lord. Every Sunday we find ourselves waking up early in the morning, putting on our Sunday go to meeting clothes, and coming to church. We gather at the church house, not because it's a ritual, it's, or it's just a thing to do on Sunday, but most of us gather because we really love being in the very presence of our Lord and Savior. Most of us gather because we literally want to worship the one who has blessed us each and every day. For most, life in the church is very peaceful and very serene. For most, life in the church is, is a time where I can really come and get in touch with me, myself, and I, and also the one who created me. His name is God. Life in the church is surreal, and life in the church is peaceful, and for some, though life outside of the church is not the same as it is on the inside. Life on the outside of the church is, is oftentimes filled with the pressures that comes with being who we are. And life 
pulls us and stretches us and strains us. And for most, our uh, life uh, has become problematic, but we find respite in the church. We, we find, we find that on Sunday morning, that's the time for me to get my tank filled, not just with the gas that will motivate me for another week, but get my tank filled with the substance, the word of God that will allow me to prosper doing his will. Yes. Life in the church off the time is quite different than life outside of the church. But what do you do when you discover that life both in and outside of the church is surreal? What do you do when life becomes chaotic? What do you do when the book is Let's get it. I want to kind of press that point home for a while today because here in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, some eight years after the ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the saints that were at Jerusalem discovered that the benediction had been ushered. I mean more than just now in the hymn who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think, do, or ask. I mean more than just amen. I, I mean literally the benediction had been given because life as they knew it was no longer the same. They no longer could transverse through the streets of Jerusalem and walk into the temple and praise our Lord and Savior. For the Bible says that the church was under stress. The church was under persecution. And now the very things that they encounter on the streets, they now count and count it in the church. But what did they do? What what, what, what do they do that could help us today when we leave these consecrated walls? Well, glad you asked that question because the first century church says there's three things we have to learn how to do once the benediction is given in our lives. And the first thing we need to learn how to do is we need to learn how to practice the word. Right. I, I like that because as we look at this particular text, notice what the church did not do. The Bible says that they were under persecution. The Bible says that Saul wreaked havoc in the church, but nobody picked up, watch this now, nobody picked up a baseball bat and was ready to fight. The Bible says they encountered the change in their lives and simply began to practice the very word of God. You see, this church uh, in the book of Acts discovered something that we all need to learn, and that is that when God brings about change in our lives, he oft oftentimes do it by scattering us. Mm -hmm. he, he has a way of bringing about change in our lives by scattering us, dispensing, watch this, dispersing us, not just in the calmness or convenience of life, but oftentimes he brings about chaos so that we can really deal with change. Yeah. And one of the problems that we have in life is dealing with change. Yes. We encounter change every day. Yeah. If you don't believe me, when I woke up this morning, gas was 345 <laughs> when I left the house. Yeah. When I get back, it'll probably be yeah. raised yeah. by 7 yeah. Because yeah. change yeah. is constant. Change yeah. is constant. Change yeah. is constant. Yeah. But instead of complaining, I have to learn how to practice the word of Somebody said, Reverend, I'm practicing the word. I, I don't lie, I don't lie, I don't lie, I don't lie. But here in the text, practicing the word is not just a, a physical thing, but practicing the word is a mental exercise but we, because we have to learn how to trust in the Lord. Yeah. I, I like that, y'all. Because you may quote scripture all day long, but it's not about quoting it, it's about living it. And we have to learn how to trust the Lord particularly when our circumstances change in our lives. See, we, we are people who love life to be like this. But life is often static. It, it goes up and down. One day is good. One day is bad. One day is hot. And one day it's, it's cold. Came to church this morning and Sister Orange was cold because it was 42 degrees, and I said, just hang around for a while. It'll pop up the round, ain't it? Life, life, life goes up and down. But one of the things we have to learn is how to trust in the Lord. See, we got to learn how to practice the word of God. Solomon tells, tells his own son, look, get understanding, but in your getting, make sure you learn how to trust in the Lord. We have to learn how to trust the Lord because, because even though change happens on the outside, we need to understand that God is always in control. Right. Here, in Acts chapter 8, benediction is given to the church as they uh, knew it. 
Yeah. No longer did they could they worship in the comfortable confines of the temple, for now they were scattered. But remember now that uh, early on in the in the book of Acts, that uh, we discovered that there was a commission given. And the commission was that they, they just don't go to Jerusalem, but they go to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. And for the will of God to be accomplished, God had to allow them to be scattered. Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. Many people will never see what God will have them be because they're too comfortable right. staying where they are. Right. <laughs> there comes a time when you got to learn how to move. There comes a time when you have to learn that God will bring about the winds of change, not to change you, but to move you so that you can, watch this now, see change happen in the world. Ah, see, the Bible says, therefore, those who were scattered, I like that. In other words, in spite of the winds of the day, they learned how to move where God wanted them to move. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, every now and then, sometimes God has to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. He has to nudge some. Yeah, yeah. But in others, he just got to. <laughs> he he got to really push because we will never move on our own. But thank God, God allows scattering to happen. So that I can blossom in his womb. The Bible says that this congregation, understanding what was going on, understanding that there was persecution, not in the church house, but on the church itself, moved to wherever God wanted them to go. They just didn't stay in Jerusalem, but they also moved around in Judea and to Samaria. They moved, but they went, watch this now, preaching the word of God. No complaining. No grumbling, not mad at God, not, not mad at God. I'm not going to church anymore. No, they are the church. I need to remind us this morning that the church is not a building. The church is not brick and mortar, but the church is made up of saints that have been washed in the blood of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, can't nobody stop the church. You may shut this building down, but you cannot shut down the church of God, not the church of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because if God is in you, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Yeah. Because it lets me know that when my life begins to change, I am not controlled by circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Some of our faith is so is so shallow yeah. that we lose it at the very oh. essence of, of, of a wrong wind. Yeah. Ah, you know, some folk can be saved as long as their, their money in the pot. Yeah. Ah. Right. Got a chicken in every pot, got some change. Oh. In the left pocket, got a little bill in the back pocket. Yeah. Everything is looking good, but how, how good are you, how faithful are you when things become kind of shaky? Yeah. Yeah. I see some folk in here yeah. uh, that came up uh, when 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 they still had Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Things were not always good, but they discovered you discovered that God is always in control. Yeah. You got to learn how to roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because watch this now. It's not about staying where you are. But it's about moving. In the very will of God. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says they were scattered, but as they were scattered, they went everywhere preaching. Preach. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish that was the church today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, everywhere. Yes, preaching. Yeah. Everywhere. Preaching. Preach. 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 Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Preach. Preach. Yeah. They went to school. Preaching. Preach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rolled the bus. Yes, preaching. Stuck in traffic. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee break. Preach. Into the rodeo. Preach. Friday night they went. Everywhere they went on. Don't act like you don't go to a place. 
Friday night, but everywhere they went, they 